Here's tonight. Tonight. Daycare tragedy. Seven Quebec toddlers die on a country outing. Jean Chrétien leaves no doubt about who's the boss. We still have a lot of work to do. And the law of the jungle in a suburban backyard. CTV News with Lloyd Robertson. Good evening. It is a tragedy of unimaginable horror. Quebec is in mourning tonight after a devastating highway crash killed seven young children. It was supposed to have been a happy occasion. The children, all between the ages of two and five, were on a field trip when their daycare van lost control and smashed into another vehicle. The impact was so powerful, several toddlers were thrown out of the van. Hysterical parents rushed to the scene. Several collapsed after finding their children lying dead in a snowy field. The accident has shattered the small community of Saint-Jean-Baptiste de Calais, just south of Trois-Rivières. CTV's Rosemary Thompson has more. It all began as a daycare trip to eat maple syrup taffy on the snow. It ended in a terrible accident. Seven children are dead. Several bodies were found in a snowy field. One witness said the children looked like angels, their tiny arms spread out beside them. Police say they were thrown from this minivan because most were not wearing seat belts. Most of all of the children uh, implied in the impact were outside of the vehicle. They seemed to have been ejected at, on the impact. The daycare owner was driving. She survived. She was wearing a seatbelt, but her five-year-old son was killed. The driver was not seriously injured, but she's in uh, état de shock. She loaded 10 children inside a minivan designed to hold seven passengers. Police found only one car seat. Under Quebec law, children under the age of five must be secured in a car seat. I imagine that the children were not belted. And, uh, there was a lot of traffic. The local newspaper is situated right beside the road where it happened. Publisher Jean Blanchette witnessed the aftermath. I already knew two, two of the, the young child died. Police are trying to piece together what happened. The road was uh, wet. Uh, there was some ice. Uh, the driver lost control of her vehicle. The driver that broadsided it was interviewed by a local journalist. Immediately after the accident, he got out of, of, of his, he got out of, of his car to help the people. Families rushed to the crash site, hoping to find their children alive. Only three survived. Saint Jean Baptiste de Nicolet is a small town of 4,000 people, but all of Quebec is in mourning. There was a moment of silence in the National Assembly and the promise of an investigation. But the suffering is unbearable for parents who believe the home daycare program was safe. Rosemary Thompson, CTV News, Montreal. Quebec highways have been the scene of many of Canada's deadliest road accidents. In October 1997, north of Quebec City, 43 people died after a bus carrying seniors crashed on a sharp turn. In August 1978, 41 handicapped people drowned when their bus plunged into a Quebec lake. In July 1993, a fiery head-on crash between a truck and a minibus killed 20 people. And in October 1966, 19 teenagers died when their bus collided with a freight train at a level crossing near Dorian, Quebec. Tonight, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien spoke for all Canadians as he offered his condolences to the victims' families. There is a lot of people who are in pain tonight and we want to share the pain with them and we want to see too that we'll be praying for uh, the recovery of those who have survived. The Prime Minister's somber mood contrasted sharply with an event a few hours earlier. He was on hand to receive a rousing welcome at the opening of the Liberals' big convention in Ottawa. And once again, he made it crystal clear he is in charge and plans to stay at the top. But for his finance minister, Paul Martin, this was an uncomfortable day as he struggled to fend off suggestions he is not totally on side. CTV's Jim Munson has more. He had good reason to be smiling. Liberal youth chanting four more years. And Prime Minister Jean Chrétien saying he's more than willing to comply. We still have a lot of work to do. And I intend to do it for the next four years, as you said to me a minute ago. 
Another politician, the perceived heir apparent, wasn't so fortunate. What, what do you want me to do? Paul Martin has had better days. He was forced to explain a meeting his staff had with 20 MPs last week at a Toronto airport hotel. I, I don't know what, what, what went on at this particular meeting, but the question is, do they, do they get polling data, for instance, on the budget? Absolutely. I mean, but this session with MPs considered loyal to Paul Martin is raising suspicions. They were talking more than just about selling the budget. Martin later relented and conceded as much. What they really uh, discussed on Friday uh, was the wide range of media stories concerning uh, myself uh, and the IMF. When cornered about the leadership, Paul Martin appeared to put on a brave face. Mr. Kretschmann uh, has the entire right to make his own decision, and I respect that decision. The proof that I respect that decision is that I intend to run again. For his part, the Prime Minister was having a much better day. There is um, some genuine, really Irish shaman, which is designed to bring you luck, sir. Chrétien even took time off from the convention, counting on a little Irish luck from an Irish politician for the next election campaign. Clearly, Liberal delegates are in no mood to challenge the Prime Minister. The last time the Liberals did that to one of their own was in 1984. The president of the party was asked to tell Pierre Trudeau it was time to go. This president is not about to do that. What political party ever in any country gets rid of a leader that has the support that this Prime Minister has. If any Liberals haven't gotten the message yet, the Prime Minister will spell it out one more time when he speaks to the full convention on Friday night, that he's in charge, and that this weekend is all about preparing for the next election. Jim Munson, CTV News, Ottawa. And with me from the Convention Centre, CTV Ottawa Bureau Chief Craig Oliver. Craig has been a remarkable few days watching the Liberals breaking their secret code, that is, never to speak out against their leader in public. What's it done to the mood of the Convention? Uh, Lloyd, at least on the surface, by design, by careful scripting, uh, this has been upbeat, uh, at least the first day. Uh, the Prime Minister has been so vehement in his repeated affirmations that he intends to be around to lead the party in another campaign, uh, and since there's no option, no other uh, leadership mechanism here to change anything, I think the party has rallied around him uh, since it really doesn't have any choice. And since, fair enough, his numbers are high and many people feel he's the guy that should lead them anyway. Well, that's what we're hearing out front. What are they saying in the back rooms and in the hallways? Uh, whisper campaigns between Kretschenites and Martinites, some of them quite vicious. Uh, did Martin, or at least his people, have some kind of a conspiracy meeting in advance of this to plan his approach at this meeting? Uh, what will Martin do? That's a, a common thread here, because I think a lot of liberals felt that Kretschen was just trying to keep his options open in saying he was going to run again, but really didn't intend to. Now they're beginning to see that, yes, he's going to do it. He's going to go for the roses. Uh, and what they're wondering is, will Martin quit? If so, when will he quit? And most of all, how much will it hurt the party going into a campaign without Paul Martin? Fascinating politics. Thanks very much, Craig. There could be a major break in the tragic case of Mindy Tran. She is the young girl from Kelowna, British Columbia, who was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and murdered nearly six years ago. Shannon Muran, the man charged in her death, was recently acquitted. Now, producer Margot Harper of VTV in Vancouver has uncovered new information that points to another suspect, a pedophile police had overlooked until now. Here's her report. It is one of British Columbia's most enduring mysteries, the murder of Kelowna's eight-year-old Mindy Tran in the summer of 1994, the prosecution of Newfoundland drifter Shannon Muran, which ended with a not guilty verdict almost two months ago. Just happy to get out in that, right? I can't believe it. Even after a jury declared Muran not guilty, Kelowna RCMP said they had the right man. But in light of a startling new tip, police traveled today to Mountain Prison in the Fraser Valley to interview an inmate who made a jailhouse confession to the murder of Mindy Tran. The inmate who heard the confession is in a Victoria prison. For a few hours last fall, he shared a cell with a 49-year-old man who lived in Kelowna when Mindy disappeared, a man the courts have described as a chronic pedophile with a very severe psychosexual disorder. And you have to buy, like, a condemned building or something like that. 
He says, and then they were searching through his yard and his words, it didn't like track something. This would be about the front of the house and it went back to that lot. John Hunter is a Kelowna electrical contractor who remembers searching a condemned house in Mindy's neighborhood the day after she went missing. It looked like there'd somebody had been sleeping in there. So in knowing that the building had been abandoned for about uh, approximately two months, uh, it was a little bit suspicious. A tape of the confession was given to detectives from BC's Unsolved Homicide Squad, who have since interviewed the inmate who heard it. Cologne RCMP today say they eliminated the pedophile as a suspect in 1994, but agree the new information should be pursued. Police have not revealed what happened during their interview at Mountain Prison this afternoon, but have said they plan to take DNA evidence from the man who allegedly confessed, hoping to either charge or eliminate him as a suspect in the latest chapter of the Mindy Tran mystery. Margot Harper, CTV News, Vancouver. Nearly 200 truckers from all over the United States steered their big rigs into Washington today to drive home an angry point over high gas prices. The truckers want Congress to roll back part of the federal gasoline tax. They say they can no longer make a living because of soaring prices for fuel. It's the second time in less than a month truckers have rallied in Washington. Next in the news, should freedom of expression mean an open-door policy for hardcore pornography? The owner of this Vancouver bookstore asks Canada's top court to settle a controversial issue, and later... A new building instead of this rat trap. A much-needed shot in the arm for Canada's ailing war museum. These stories still to come on CTV News. sophistication that won't go unnoticed. I want to learn. I love to teach. I want a job. I need some help. I need to buy. I have things to sell. The internet is helping Canadians connect and the government of Canada has programs that help. Computers for Schools provides computers. Schoolnet and LibraryNet help provide internet access. Student Connection helps businesses get into e-commerce. And Community Access connects Canadians to each other and the world. For a free Connecting Canadians information kit, call 1-800-O-CANADA. Life has its bumps, but you don't have to feel them. Now Midas Gold Struts with R2 technology are only $79.95 each with a lifetime guarantee at any Midas. Go smoothly. Go Midas. Stomach upset? <sighs> Soothe things over with your stomach. Pepto lets you stomach it. In business news tonight, it's been another stunning day on North American stock markets. On Wall Street, the Dow rocketed to new heights, setting a record for daily point gains. The Dow Jones Industrial Average shot up 499 points. That's on top of yesterday's 320-point surge. A two-day gain of 8%. Fueling the frenzy, a buying binge of traditional blue-chip stocks. In Toronto, the TSE gained 194 points in heavy trading. The government of Alberta took steps today to make sure same-sex marriages are never given legal status in the province. It passed legislation recognizing only marriages between men and women. It also called on the province to use the Constitution's notwithstanding clause should Ottawa ever approve of homosexual marriages. The Supreme Court of Canada spent the day hearing arguments about the rights of gays and lesbians about whether customs officers have the right to decide which magazines and books they read. 
The case centers on the Little Sisters Bookstore in Vancouver, a gay and lesbian establishment that claims it is being singled out by low-level bureaucrats who have no business deciding what is obscene. John Benavalli Rao reports. Little Sisters is a tiny Vancouver bookstore that's taken on a giant fight. Its 10-year battle against Canada Customs has finally made its way to the country's highest court. All of these lawyers here to argue that Customs should not have the power to decide what's obscene and what Canadians can read. I suppose if we were um, dealing with um, people with guns or people with drugs, um, might be something. We're dealing with people with books. For years, Canada Customs has detained gay and lesbian material the bookstore was trying to import, enforcing a definition of obscenity set by the Supreme Court nearly a decade ago, which says it's anything that degrades people in a way that would offend society. What lawyers argued before the court is that it's too broad a definition to be interpreted by low-level bureaucrats. Since this bookstore first opened in 1983, more than 250 items have been seized at the border, including some books that were previously ruled admissible. And then there are books like this one that were detained, yet were imported by other bookstores in town, including the public library, with no problems. That led Little Sisters Bookstore to suspect it was being treated differently because it catered to gays and lesbians. They don't want to see customs agents regulating what we read and what we don't read. Lawyers for the federal government admit mistakes have been made in enforcing the law, but say there's nothing wrong with the definition of obscenity, and say customs officers are now being better trained. And one women's rights group wants customs to keep its powers. The police have identified this as an important mechanism. What, what is the point of letting this material into the country only to prohibit it then? It's now up to the Supreme Court to write the final chapter on Little Sister's big fight. John Vanavelli Rao, CTV News. Still ahead tonight, a big cat, a little boy, and a tragedy just waiting to happen. My husband retrieved the arm. We bagged it, put it in ice. The search for medical miracles as a pet tiger sinks his teeth into this three-year-old. That's coming up on CTV News. like a parent's touch and when your child has a cold he wants the relief of Vicks Vapor Rub. Your touch helps release medicated vapors that quickly relieve nasal congestion and calm coughing. For a good night, trust the relief of Vicks Vapor Rub. This is a CFCN News Update. I'm Jane Kerrigan. Coming up tonight, the Premier slams the feds at his fundraising dinner and fire destroys a home in the southeast. More on those stories tonight at 11.30. Door Pontiac Sunfire now comes with four speed automatic, air conditioning, and remote keyless entry. Hey, how's it going? Plus, a theft deterrent system. The Pontiac Sunfire 2000 value package. A load of extra features, 218 a month, or 1.9% purchase financing. Pontiac Sunfire, built for drivers. Do you ever have one of those days when you have to be a superhero just to get through the morning? Well, for most of us, it doesn't hurt to have a little extra energy on hand. We all want to feel great when it really matters. Start feeling great with a visit to Fitness Depot. For the best brands of home fitness equipment and guaranteed lowest prices come together to help you feel great every day. A three-year-old Texas boy is recovering in hospital tonight after a terrifying encounter with a tiger. The animal was a pet kept in the family yard. 
It was declawed, and neighbors described it as gentle and passive. As it turns out, that was not an entirely accurate description. Bob McNamara has the chilling details. It would take Houston surgeons nine hours to reattach three-year-old Jayton Tidwell's right arm after a pet Bengal tiger tore it off just above the little boy's elbow. The powerful jaws of the tiger had literally ripped the arm off the boy's body rather than cleanly cut it off, and therefore there's a lot of damage. The backyard nightmare happened at the home of the boy's uncle. The toddler had put his arm into the 400-pound tiger's cage. Neighbors heard screams. My husband retrieved the arm. We bagged it, put it in ice and water, wrapped it up, and then we ran waiting for EMS. The little boy's surgery was successful. He just couldn't be doing better at this point in time. But even for grown-ups, exotic pets are not playmates. These are pans that we feed. These are stainless steel. These are teeth marks. To James Gilbreth, the stories of lion and tiger attacks are too familiar. He runs a Texas sanctuary for unwanted exotic cats. This cat here looks very happy, but he key just deader than a hammer in, in less than a minute. Thousands of miles out of Africa and Asia, there are more big cats in captivity in this country than there are in the wild. And Texas has no state law to regulate. We need some kind of law in Texas or these accidents are going to continue to happen and be more frequent. They are nothing to fool with. They can be darling, but dangerous, and deadly, too. Bob McNamara, CBS News, Dallas. And briefly in other news tonight, natives at the Eskasani Reserve in Nova Scotia were protesting the actions of their chief today. Alison Bernard was reportedly paid a yearly salary of more than $400,000. The province is threatening to shut down video lottery terminals on the reserve in the wake of the disclosure. Seven people were injured when a bomb exploded in a crowded marketplace in New Delhi. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, which comes days before U.S. President Bill Clinton's arrival in India. And a serial killer in Pakistan has been sentenced to the same fate as his victims. Bakish Ranja is to be strangled, his body dismembered, and dipped in acid. The sentence has provoked outrage among human rights groups. When we return, lest we forget, a spiffy new set of marching orders for a grand old military institution. Oh, the agony some minivans put us through. Not Chevy Venture. It adapts to just about any situation. Chevy Venture offers more rear cargo room than Dodge Grand Caravan, and easy flip and fold seats for even more room which leaves you more time to enjoy life and others room for improvement. Get a 2000 Chevy Venture, the most versatile minivan ever with just 1.9% purchase financing. Chevy Venture, let's go. When I'm submerged in my studies, I don't always eat right. That's why I take Centrum every day for complete vitamin and mineral support. I study the science of the sea, but I trust the science of Centrum. It helps make my day complete. When I'm looking for the perfect picture, eating right can be difficult. That's why I take Centrum every day for complete vitamin and mineral support. I love the science of shadow and light, but I trust the science of Centrum. It helps make my day complete. Life has its bumps, but you don't have to feel them. Now Midas Gold Struts with R2 technology are only $79.95 each with a lifetime guarantee at any Midas. Go smoothly, go Midas. See the movie that has Newsweek magazine raving Julia Roberts rules. Well, tell her I'm not a lawyer. That may help. They're calling Erin Brockovich a hugely entertaining movie. Thanks. Erin Brockovich starts Friday at theaters everywhere. For news the moment it happens, weather, business, and sports, the net covers your town, your country, your world. CTV News Net. News now. Closed captioning on CTV is brought to you in part by New Canada Savings Bonds with more choices, more options, and the security to keep you on solid ground. And finally for us tonight, Canada's veterans have at long last won a battle they have been waging for years. The federal government has agreed to put $58 million towards the construction of a new Canadian war museum. 
It is welcome news for veterans who have long been dissatisfied with the state of the current building. CTV's Norman Fetterly reports. The War Museum is jammed into an old warehouse and a leaky government building. Its exhibits jumbled together and many not even on display. Veterans have been promised something better for years. Now they'll get it. And no one is more pleased than Paul McTivier. He's 100 years old and served in World War I. I think it's deserved that they remember. They have something to remember them by. A new building instead of this rat trap, uh, that's a, a great change too. And parking and space for outdoor exhibits. And uh, it's, it just changes the whole way we'll function. There's still cash to be raised. Another $10 million is needed from the private sector. But the Royal Canadian Legion chipped that amount down today with a $500,000 check. And veteran Barney Danson, a former defense minister and now honorary patron of the Passing the Torch fundraising campaign, thinks the rest will follow. Now we have some satisfaction that our story will be appreciated and told and for generations to come. It's a view shared by other veterans who face down bureaucratic obstacles to a new war museum as they once faced down enemy fire. It's taken the government a long time to come around to it, but I think it's, it'd be a good, uh, good deal for veterans and for Canada. Now I have five, I've got to live for five more years so I can see it open. <laughs> the hope is to have the new war museum open sometime in the spring of 2004. That would be the 60th anniversary as well of the Normandy invasion. Norman Vetterly, CTV News, Ottawa. And that's the kind of day it's been this Thursday, March the 16th. I'm Lloyd Robertson for all of us here at CTV News. Good night. CTV News, Canada's most watched newscast. For news the moment it happens, weather, business, and sports, the net covers your town, your country, your world. CTV News Net. News now. New Century is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. You could call it the first of the new generation of smart bathrooms, a computer plus toilet and shower that talk to its users. It's a development that may significantly improve the lives of patients with memory disorders. Even the simple task of washing hands can be impossible for those with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. They arrive in the bathroom and they're not sure why they're there. If they're going to go to the toilet, perhaps they forget to take the pants off before they sit on the toilet. It's embarrassing and frustrating, which is why researchers have developed the talking bathroom. Pick up the soap in front of you and wash your hands. The system uses computer sensors to tell patients what not to forget. Use the brown towel on your right to dry your hands. It only intervenes if they appear to be lost, if they don't do the next action that's expected within a reasonable time frame. The system has been tested on a handful of patients with severe memory problems, patients who initially took up to seven minutes just to wash their hands. Once we then introduced the device, uh, none of the patients took more than three minutes then to complete the task. The goal is to create talking bathroom units that will cost less than $1,000 for use in homes and in hospitals. When you have technology intervening, it means that people can retain more of their independence. If people can be independent, I think it's they feel better about themselves. Good job. Now leave the washroom. Problems with cleanliness and bathroom functions is one of the key reasons that people give up caring for family members with Alzheimer's and dementia. By putting computers together with sinks, toilets, and showers, technology can turn a place of embarrassment and frustration into a haven of privacy and independence. owners really love their cars. So we're not surprised that the Jetta was ranked most appealing car in its class by J.D. Power & Associates. I'm okay. Sunday night on CTV News. A man was charged with assault and then acquitted. 
He's not a criminal, so why did his name remain under the Criminal Names Index? Watch Goldhawk Fights Back on CTV News Sunday night at 11.